Hey guys, Sonix here. This video will be a complete guide on how to chain for shiny Pokemon. I realised that there isn't really a cohesive guide on how to do this, so I thought I'd make one. I've been successful over the years with the radar, though I have seen quite a few people still struggling with it. The Poker Radar can be an incredibly frustrating method to encounter shiny Pokemon, so with a bit of luck, you'll be able to catch one with the help of this guide. Before I start, however, I do want to point out that this video will not be covering chaining for X and Y. Whilst the process is mostly the same, there are some differences which I'll likely go over in a future video. This guide will be unique to Pokemon Diamond, Pearl and Platinum. First of all, what is the Poker Radar? Well, we first got the opportunity to discover the secrets in Generation 4. It's a key item which is gifted by Professor Rowan after having deleted the Elite Four. The actual purpose for the radar is to capture suddenly newly available Pokemon from previous generations in the Sinnoh region. An example of this will be Route 201, which usually contains the Pokemon Starly and Bidoof. However, once the Poker Radar is used, a number of grassy patches will animate in certain ways. These will allow you to encounter Nidoran male or Nidoran female on this particular route. On most routes throughout the game, once the Poker Radar is obtained, you'll be able to encounter more Pokemon than ever, and ones that weren't previously obtainable. A secondary effect, however, is the ability to chain a Pokemon. In the right circumstances, a successful chain can result in a shiny encounter. First of all, you're going to need the following things. The Poker Radar, which is registered to the select button on the Nintendo DS, the Radar Checker app from Professor Oak at Pal Park, a number of repels, don't skimp out on the amount you bring by the way, as you could be here a while. If you're short on money however, there's an old rich couple just outside of the Trophy Garden on Route 213, which will gift you a lot of money if you have the Amulet Coin equipped. Be sure to use the VS Seeker to rebattle them as many times as you see fit. Finally, you're going to need a variety of Pokeballs and some very strong Pokemon with plenty of PP on their moves. With all this in hand, you should be ready to start your chain, but before you do, do your research on the Pokemon you're targeting. Consider the following. Number 1. Is the Pokemon I'm targeting an Electric type? You can boost your chance of encountering Electric Pokemon to 50% if your lead Pokemon is Static has its ability. If you're also targeting a Steel type, it would be greatly beneficial to lead with a Pokemon that has Magnet Pull to ensure a 50% chance encounter for a Steel type Pokemon. Number 2. Can the Pokemon damage itself? Many Pokemon have Recoil or Auto Faint moves such as Take Down or Explosion. Be sure to note which moves the Pokemon will have once you have encountered it, as you don't want to see a shiny faint itself. Consider bringing a Ghost type if you know a Pokemon will have takedown as it will be ineffective based on its type. Secondly, consider bringing a Pokemon with Damp to prevent a Pokemon using Self Destruct or Explosion. Number 3. Although Extreme and Master Ball, a hand can always help. Certain chainable Pokemon such as Beldum can be very difficult to capture due to their low catch rate. Having the security of a certain capture may prevent a nightmare scenario, especially as Beldum only comes knowing takedown. Number 4. Weather can be tricky to navigate through in Sinnoh due to the harsh climates. Hail and sandstorms can catch you out, so if you do plan on hunting in these areas, it may be beneficial to bring the almighty Rayquaza with an airlock to prevent any chip damage. Okay, with all that out of the way guys, let's take a look at the Pokemon you want to chain. There are a lot of chainable Pokemon to go for, so be sure to check the list in the description below for Poker Radar exclusive Pokemon. Anything available in grassy patches in Sinnoh can be your target. For beginners, I'd avoid areas where weather obstructs your view, as well as low encounter rate Pokemon as the chain is more likely to break if you were to make a slight error. Using Magnet Pull and Static where you can, and start off with a target of at least 50% encounter to get the basics right. Some examples of the best Pokemon to start with are Shinx, Starly, Bidoof, Ponyta, Voltorb, and Electric. Be aware that some of these Pokemon are Swarm only. These Pokemon all have a high encounter rate with the aid of Static or Magnet Pull, so you are less likely to break the chain should you enter a grassy patch which isn't ideal. Okay, so we're ready to chain. Let's start by looking at the following graph. I'd always recommend to start your radar in the centre of any grass sections as to allow maximum space for four patches to shake. There are four rings around the player highlighted in different colours. The ones in red I would avoid at all costs. These patches are almost certain to break your chain. The ones in yellow are still not ideal but contain less chance of breaking your chain, and the ones in orange contain even less chance. Finally, the ones in blue are the patches we're aiming for. These patches will give your chain the highest chance of continuing so be sure to always go for these. These patches are always at least 4 steps from you followed by another direction. There are 3 types of grass and I've labelled them as the following. Normal grass Violent grass Shiny grass When you start your chain it's really important you always enter the same type. For example if you enter violent grass but then on the second reset you enter normal grass, your chain will break. Simple as that. Stick to the same type of grass throughout your chain. Also. 
Note that the violent grass tends to contain rarer Pokemon by default, so you are more likely going to be using this style of grass. Ok, let's take some notes. Never enter a grass patch that is directly in front of you, even if it's 4 steps away as what more likely will result in a broken chain. As well as this, never enter a patch of grass that is on the edge of the section. If your chain doesn't break immediately, you're likely to break it once the Poker Radar resets after defeating the Pokemon, as the game will be unable to load patches outside of the grassy areas. Ok, let's start some chaining. So the first reset you can see here gives me this grass patch. It's 4 away in one direction, and 2 steps again. That's perfect, and it's not on the edge nor directly in front of me. Now let's try again. Ok, this one is again perfectly fine. It's 4 steps in this direction, and then a further 3 steps. Perfect. Sometimes you'll likely come across 4 patches which aren't ideal for your chain, as they won't offer the violent grass. Simply run another 50 steps, avoiding the grass patches which have shook, and reset your radar. Also do this if only 1, 2 or 3 patches have shook, as there always needs to be 4 during any reset of the radar. Any less, and your chain will most likely break. I can't stress how important it is to be sure before entering the grass patch. If you're not sure, don't risk it, simple as that. Take your time and be patient. If you rush it, it will frustrate you and your chain will break. Let's continue our chain. Ok, this one is no good. It has given us 4 patches, but none of which are the correct grass we're looking for. If I enter any of these, it will most likely break my chain. Let's try again. This time we only have 3 patches. Regardless of one being 4 steps away, the fact that there is only 3 which have responded to the radar overrides that. It will almost certainly break our chain. Let's try again. Perfect. This one is 4 steps away and 2 in the other direction. The chain continues. It's fairly simple for the most part, just be sure to always be patient. Be sure of the patch you're entering and if you have any doubts, just reset the radar. It's not worth risking if you're not sure. Let's reset to show you on screen one final example of a patch to avoid. Never enter a patch on the edge of the section you're chaining in. Despite it being 4 steps away, the fact that it's on the edge will almost certainly break your chain, so avoid these patches at all costs. Let's have a quick roundup before we finish the chain and show you the end result. Be equipped. Make sure you're well equipped before starting any of your chains, as you really don't want to get to a chain of 40 and realise you have no Pokeballs. Research the Pokemon. Can the Pokemon damage itself? Does it know a battle ending move? Be prepared to put some time into this. It won't likely happen in 30 minutes. Practice patience and be prepared to have some chains break on you. Here's a roundup of what to avoid when chaining. Choose the right patch. Refer back to the diagram on screen or check the description below for a still image. Only aim for the blue patches. The ones further away from you will give you the highest chance of continuing your chain. Avoid patches in front of you. Never walk into a patch of grass which was on the same light of sight as your character. That's how your chain breaks. Avoid the edges. Just pretend the patches are lava. And no, no lava cookies if you step in them. The rule of four. There must always be four patches of grass when you try to continue your chain. If there's only one, two, or three, it's more likely not going to end well. The right patch. Be sure to never change the type of grass you enter. Normal grass and violent grass will contain different Pokemon, so be consistent. That's pretty much it. You're aiming to reach a chain of 40, so once you've reached this point, just keep resetting the radar, and avoid the non-shiny patches. Eventually, you will find that rare shiny patch. FAQs. In this section, I'll try to cover as much as I can in terms of potential doubts you may have. If there's anything else, let me know in the comments and I'll do my best to help you out. Number 1. My chain randomly broke. Yeah, it sucks, but it can just break. After much debate, data miners and hackers show that the numbers aren't always consistent. You can do everything right and there's still a small percentage of your chain breaking each time you reset. It's important to keep in mind that following this guide, and any other guides for that matter, are designed to give you the best possible advantage of continuing with chain of 40. Not a guarantee. If it randomly breaks, keep calm, have a cup of tea and start again. You'll get there. Number 2. The weather is too much and I can't see where I'm chaining. Sinnoh is a very diverse region in terms of climate. There's sandstorms, rain and hail. I'd honestly avoid these places for chaining unless you really want to challenge yourself for that shiny Beldum or snow run. If you're stubborn though, I'd recommend chaining at night in-game and focusing on the violent patches of grass when they're most visible. There are also areas which don't contain weather which also prove difficult to chain in. The most famous example is Sunkern, which has a tiny area on the northern section of Route 204. All I can say is, good luck to anyone attempting this as you're a braver person than I. Number 3. Can I chain indoors or on water? Sadly no. Chaining is only possible in standard grass, so long grass, indoors and water based Pokemon tend to be excluded unless you can find them on land too. Number 4. Can I go beyond the chain of 40 to increase my odds? The short answer is no. The long answer is, your chance to find a shiny is lower to 1 in 200 per patch at a chain of 40. 
and this is pretty much the best that it gets. Any increase to your chain of 40 is essentially useless, and you simply risk breaking the chain for the sake of a higher number. It really isn't worth it. Your odds actually improve every reset, which you can view in the description below. That leads me to my next FAQ. Number 5. Can a shiny patch appear before 40? Absolutely. Although rare, it can happen, so keep focused every reset. I myself have found a shiny patch on the chain of 8 for Surskit in Pearl version, which calculated is a 1 in 6,554 chance. Neat. So that about does it for this guide guys, be sure to let me know if you found this useful at all and if there's any doubts let me know in the comment sections below and I'll get back to you as best I can. Be sure to tweet me your successful trains on Twitter, you can find the link to my profile in the description below, and until next time trainers, take care.